Hebrews 11 and verse 4 takes us back to the time of the patriarchal dispensation. And before it leaves it, it's covered Noah and Abraham. And the thing that I want to emphasize this evening, whether it's the patriarchy or whether it's the mosaical system for the Jews under the law of Moses, or whether it is the Christian system set out in the New Testament of Jesus Christ, Faith has always saved when it was obedient. If you look at Abraham, it is plain that God said, and by that I mean the Holy Spirit inspired the writer to say it, by faith. By faith what? By faith Noah. By faith Noah. What about Noah by faith? being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Now there's not anybody on the face of the earth that can say that Noah was not saved by faith. Not at all. And Romans chapter 10 verse 17 makes it clear just exactly how faith is formed in a person. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And you'll notice that when Noah learned of the flood, it was by faith, thus it was by the word of God. How did he know there was a flood coming? Nothing like that had ever entered this world. But he believed God. God told him. And notice then action on his part. What a dead faith like James talks about in James 2. He moved. He had the right attitude behind it too. He moved with fear. And he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Now Noah was saved from the flood by faith. But it required of him an obedient faith. Hebrews 5 and verse 9 will tell us that it's by obedience that we'll enter heaven. When you look at Ecclesiastes 12, you'll see that the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Notice the rest of the verse concerning how Noah was saved by faith. And notice the activity on his part. Notice that he built an ark. How did he learn about an ark? It was by faith. Why was it by faith? God told him. Why is that important? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And then you'll notice by which he condemned the world. And became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Why is this in the New Testament written to Christians? Aren't we under the authority of Christ? Isn't he the way, the truth, and the life? And no man comes to the Father but by him, John 14, 6. Well, indeed so. But I said earlier that no man's ever been saved by faith, whether it's the patriarchal age or the mosaical age or the Christian dispensation, if that faith was not obedient. Never has been. And so you see that when he built that ark, an ark he learned about from God's word, that he was simply complying with the terms of pardon God had given him. Pardon from what? Pardon from the flood. (laughs) Because everybody else died in the flood except Noah and his wife, his three sons and each one of their wives. But let's take us back now that we've read that in the New Testament to what Moses had to say, inspired by the same Spirit. In Genesis chapter 6, the world, to say the least, is a bad, bad place. And that's putting it mildly. It is very evil. 
God has decided I'll destroy all of them. But notice what is said about Noah in verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was saved by faith. And Noah was saved by grace. God favored him. And he did so because what's said in verse 9, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And it tells about his uh, family. Then it tells about God appearing to Noah. And what he's going to do and why. And then there's verse 14. Make thee, Noah, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Well, I thought he was saved by grace and by faith. If I listen to what's said out here in the denominational world today, if you're saved by grace through faith, you, you don't do anything in order to be saved. Well, unless somebody wants to fly into the face of God and His Word, it says in no uncertain terms He was saved by grace. And it says He was saved by faith. But He still had to make an ark. He had to show His faith in His actions. It wasn't a matter of something in the heart. God told Him to make that ark. How's he going to show that he has faith in God, that a flood's coming that no man could even imagine on his own at that time? I'll tell you how much faith he had. He built an ark, not having the, even the ability on his own to fathom such a flood that's coming. And I dare say today, we can't even fathom that flood. Because there's never been another one like it. And there won't be. And you know why? Because God promised in his word he wouldn't. And he set his bow in the heavens. And I've seen it. And I know what that bow is. It's a symbol of I will no longer ever again destroy this world by water. It's going to be at the other end of the spectrum, but it won't be water. Do you believe that? Faith comes by hearing by the word of God. I do. I do enough to to receive with meekness the engrafted word of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower second and third stories shalt thou make it. I thought he saved by grace. Try that on some of your denominational friends. They can't deny unless they want to deny the Bible. The Bible says, no in certain terms, Noah was saved by grace. Also saved by faith. Well, why is he building an ark? That's action on his part. That's work on his part. Well, God told him to. In effect, what he's saying, if you really believe me, Obey me. Therefore, the writer of Hebrews would say that he's the author of eternal salvation to all those that obey him. Hebrews 5 9. But I thought we're saved by faith through grace. We are. James has something to say about that because he gets into this business for how do I show my faith? He makes it very clear. Beginning in verse 14 in chapter 2 of James. What doth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Now, put that back on Noah. Noah saved by grace. How do I know that? The Bible tells me so. Noah saved by faith. How do I know that? The Bible tells me so. How did that faith come? It came by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. But then James, inspired of the same Holy Spirit that inspired Moses, inspired the writer of the Hebrews, asked the question, of brethren, what doth it profit? My brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? 
You know what the world around us says for the most part? Why, certainly. In fact, if you try to do anything in order to be saved, you're trying to merit salvation. Poor old Holy Spirit and poor old James and poor old New Testament of Jesus Christ, they didn't know that. Now, folks, that's been in the Bible all these years, in fact, for about 2,000. And it means tonight what it meant when it was originally written, as do these other scriptures. The question that has to be answered is answered this way, verse 14. When he says, What doth it profit my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? No! That's the very point that James is making. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Now, why does he give that illustration? An inspired one. Because anybody ought to be able to see that somebody's starving to death. You can wish them goodwill all you want to, but until you get food in his mouth, it's not going to help him any. It takes action on your part. Faith in action. And so he concludes that very thing. Look at verse 17. Even so faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Now, if Noah had heard all of that come from God and thank God for finding that he found grace in God's sight and said, I believe every word you said. But now, you see, if I start building this ark, I'll be trying to earn my salvation. And that'd be a reflection on you. Why, no. In fact, if you look at verse 22 of Genesis 6, it says plainly, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. You know what that tells me? Noah was saved by grace through an obedient faith, not a dead faith. You have to have help not to see what the Bible plainly says. And so he goes on further in James. Yea, a man say thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Let me ask you this. How did Noah show his faith in God? Without works or with works? He showed his faith in God and trust in God by complying with God's will, and he built an ark, as we read in Hebrews 11, to the saving of his house. And in effect, said an example to every one of us how simple it is to be saved by God through an obedient faith. Saved by grace through an obedient faith. Notice how James belabors this point. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. In the American Standard it says demons. But I stay with devils because I always like to talk about the devil level of faith and it all rhymes. It's catchy, you can remember it. Devil level of faith. Listen to me, humbly as I say it, but as frankly and plainly as I know how to say it. The devil level of faith is the faith the whole denominational world says is acceptable. It's merely assenting to the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and nobody else is the Savior. It rules out the teaching of the Bible on loving God with all that you are and have. And the proof of that love, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Same proof there is of faith, John 14, 15. Thou believest there is one God, thou believe do us well. So you see, you have to begin there. You have to, you have to know the facts about Jesus Christ. You have to be persuaded that he is whom he claims to be. That's important. You can't be saved without that. But it's more than that. I use this illustration to a great extent many times. The evidence is this. The evidence for Henry VIII being the king of England is in. I don't know if anybody's going to say there was not a monarch in England known as Henry VIII. I believe it, underscore believe. I believe it. Because the evidence says it is. Or says he is. But I never loved him. 
I never recognized him as my sovereign and never intended to obey him. It is upon that kind of belief that the whole denomination world places its hope of heaven. And it's nothing but the devil level of faith. The kind of faith that will save you is one that will see with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul, just like Noah did. And he heard that word because God favored him. God gave him the plan of salvation from the flood. And he demonstrated his faith in God by building that ark. And in closing, let me point this out. Not a soul was saved who was not in that ark. Not a soul. Most of the world died in the flood. Only that, those few. As Peter says, eight souls were saved by water. The like figure, figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting with the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Why is that the answer of a good conscience toward God? I know what the Bible says. I know I'm saved by grace. I know I'm saved by faith. I know how faith was created in me. I know the kind of faith that saves me. It's a living, active, obedient faith. I see it in Noah in the long, long ago. And I see that nobody was saved that wasn't in that ark. And I know there's an ark of safety today. I know exactly what it is. It's the church of the living God to which Christ adds every person he saves and there's not a saved soul outside of it. Not a one. And only those who are in it and faithful to Christ all the days of their life, however long short that might be, are going to be able someday to hear, well done thou good and faithful servant. Enter ye into the joys of thy Lord. Now there it is. People talk about the gospel being simple and plain. It is. I mean this kindly. But you have to be programmed into denominational doctrine and wedded to that and have it welded to your brain and just refuse to get rid of it. To escape these plain, simple truths that are in the Bible. So as I close my lesson, I invite anybody here who is still on the outside of Christ to realize there's one doorway, having believed or repented of your sins into Christ and having confessed your faith in Him. And it's like Galatians 3.27 says, you're baptized into Christ. Grace, we don't deserve it. We can't merit it. But God came and provided the way for us. Faith is created by the Word of God, and that faith is active and obedient. We take God in His Word. We comply with the principles of truth that are demanded of us. And we're baptized into Christ for the mission of sins. The Lord adds us to His church. Not a human organization. You can go back to the day of the churches being built in Acts 2. And you'll not find anything like exists today that calls itself Christianity. It didn't exist. Denominationalism wouldn't exist to 1,500 years down the road to what we know is denominationalism. But you hold in your hands the Bible, and it tells you all these things. You know, it was there before I ever told you tonight. You didn't, you didn't need me to tell you that. It's already in your Bible. You can read Genesis 6, you can read 1 Peter. It'll be there on the day of judgment too. Say, why didn't you accept what you read and understood? Why didn't you? And the same thing's true of us living the Christian life. We know what God requires of us in being faithful. To be faithful is to be obedient to the things God enjoins upon us as Christians. And so if we've wandered from that, we need to repent and confess those sins and pray God for forgiveness. So let us realize, yes, we're saved by grace through an obedient faith. And rise up tonight if we haven't received God's plan of salvation and obedience and do it. Well, together we stand and sing.